Hello YouTube, hello viewers, my name is Jacqueline Alfred, I'm the founder of the blog, thedoggyperspective.com. On this channel we discuss dog food reviews, pet news, and pet care related topics. Today I have a topic for you which concerns many pet owners. Oftentimes, we pet owners find ourselves seeking solutions for common issues amongst our friends and our families, but maybe we are too shy or even embarrassed to open up our mouths and ask, well, not to worry because I have a goal. I aim to answer these questions and assist you with finding and implementing the solutions that you have been searching for. So stay with me all the way to the end of the video for answers and if you haven't already done so, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Okay, so how do I say this without hurting anyone's feelings? I don't want to appear insensitive, but someone has to say it. So, your yard is a mess, honey. No, it really is. I mean, it's unsightly and it is odiferous. You know what I'm talking about. Your yard stinks. Your yard is full of dog mess and I am uncomfortable in, around, and near your property. And I know that you've noticed that little Sophia no longer plays with your dog. I stopped her play dates with your pooch five months ago after she came home reeking of urine and had feces wedged in between her toes. What a cleanup that was. But how you act as if you don't see that mess and smell that odor appalls me. How can I help you? Now, is that wrong, audience? How would you approach this subject? The question is, how do you get someone back on track after they've allowed their yard to become unsightly and unsanitary? This is our topic today. I recommend a factual approach to correction. Did you know dog urine is naturally rich in nitrogen and high concentrations of nitrogen can cause grass burns? Highly acidic or alkaline urine may also contribute to grass damage. There basically is no difference between urine from a male dog versus a female dog, but it is actually the way that dogs urinate that is responsible for damage. Female dogs can and do cause more damage to grasses simply because the girls tend to squat and urinate mostly in one place. The majority of the males are whizzing by lifting a leg and marking upright vertical objects in multiple locations. So you see, when that male dog pees on the trunk of a tree, only some of the urine drips down to the grass and causes damage. This is much less noticeable than the round spots of damage made by urine puddles from the girls. But now, worse than this is the poop. The fecal matter actually is an environmental hazard. The poop carries a large number of pollutants and parasites. Big deal. Okay. But the parasites aren't limited to dogs either. You could catch them too. So I'm sure that you will agree that we all hate brown spots in our yard, especially when it's coming from poop. Now maybe it's from your neighbor's dog or your own dog. Either way, there are dangers of poop being left in the yard. And pet parents, this further lets me know that dialogue on this topic is a must. <clears throat> Dog poop is not only dangerous to you and your family collectively, it can infect entire waterways and lead to algae blooms which can choke out plant and aquatic life. But the end all be all of this mess is that these bacteria, when left to their own devices, will spread their way throughout your yard and house if you are unlucky enough to land in a poop mine. And for the skeptics, I am taking a deep dive into this right here. Pick up the poop before you mow the lawn. That is your directive. And yes, you can ask me, why should I? What for, Jacqueline? Because fecal material have several means of spreading. You may have made a habit of cutting it into your yard, 
but when the crap hits the lawnmower blades, the fecal bacterias are slung in every direction about your yard, in the corners too. This bacteria also travels. It can be airlifted on insects and other pests, and when there aren't any bugs or pests near, they will just catch the wind and then settle in your soil or groundwater where they can stay for a year or longer. One more thing here. This, this is why your friends and neighbors may be treating you some type of way if you don't pick up the poo. And then you mow the poo down. And then the heavens provide us a windy day. Now your contribution has become fecal dust on the wind in any and every direction possible. Next, let me tell you that poop is an entertainer. Poop hosts, whipworms, hookworms, tapeworms, roundworms, and even earthworms. Dog poop has got them all. And then from there, E. coli, salmonella, and Campylobacteriosis, and all of which are horrible and can be transmitted to humans. All right, I believe I've made my point. If your dog is lethargic, losing weight, throwing up, is bloated, or has diarrhea, he could have gotten one of these many lovely infections. If your dog does end up with an infection which was caused by poop, you should consider treating your yard. Treating your yard will prevent your dog from getting reinfected by killing any parasites that may be there. Everyone, I'd like you to pay attention at this point to an excellent reference point. It's Happy DIY Home. They know grasses and can get you going on the right path. Here's their address. Go there, hit the gardening tab, then knock yourself out because you will find a plethora of how to do it yourself solutions with those folks there. They also have a sister site called yourdogadvisor.com. So write this down. I repeat, write this down. I want you to use a combination of Happy DIY Home plus your dog advisor to resolve this issue. I will leave you the links in the description box below for those sites plus links to a previous video where the perfect solution for killing off the bacteria on your animal resides. Be sure to get it. By it, I mean the product. Hello to Jesse Stark and Jennifer Stark, editors to Happy DIY Home. They both wrote to me after reading the doggyperspective.com blog post entitled Snack Snacks and More Snacks, Best Organic Snacks, right? I have a link for you below. And they gave us all a wonderful reference point corresponding and supporting, uh, corresponding to and supporting our article on snacks. So go there for the skinny on healthiest dog food. And thank you to your blog, Your Dog Advisor. Anyways. I don't want to harm, but I do hope this motivates you to clean and tidy up after your fur baby. So now that you know specifically that what is going on out there in your lawn is way more serious than just a brown spot in the grass, okay, what do we do? So what do we do? Simply scoop your dog's poop with a small plastic baggie, tie it up and throw it away. It will only take a moment. Pick it up. If you don't like the idea of throwing it away, consider an in-ground digestive system. These systems can be small and easy to install. They work as a contained unit which digests dog poop using an enzyme solution. The digester then liquefies the poop which drains into the ground. That's an entirely different video, so more on that later. Third, if you don't want to clean it up, you can always hire someone. There are sites, websites that can help you find them. And number four, also remember to keep your dog away from the pool of other dogs. And for goodness sake, no mulching the poop into your yard. 
And before we leave, it's time for From Our Table. Let's peek at a kind of plus wholesome grain. All right now, this is new, okay? And it has the new Space Age packaging too. Sophia went to town on the red meat recipe. This is made with fresh ranch raised beef, Yorkshire pork and grass-fed lamb. Here is her empty. 4.5 pounds for all breeds and all life stages. The kibble here is larger. It's hard and she really had to crunch into it to get it going. Um, this is truly unlike the wild game from dog feeding food I transitioned her in on. Nope, this is not smelly at all. There's no aroma. In fact, uh, this reminds me of rye bread. It is a quiet smell and it kind of has a proprietary blend of essential nutrients and vitamins comprised of seven forms of vitamin D, vitamin E, taurine, and choline. All of this combines to provide your dog with optimal support for a healthy life. Again, you must carefully watch the daily ration of this dry dog food. Every dog is different. So you want to vary the feeding amounts with the dog age and the dog activity. Uh, with this food, go for two feedings per day rather than the daily dish. Sophia gets three quarters to one and one quarter cup daily. For those of you who know me, what do we do? We keep towards the low end of the recommended feeding amount to compensate for hand feeding organic snacks and such. Okay, Sophia gets three quarters to one and one quarter cup daily. For those of you who know me, what do we do? We keep towards the low end of the recommended feeding amount to compensate for hand feeding of organic snacks and such. Uh, the calorie content on this food is 29% from protein, 28% from carbohydrates, and 43% from fat. Akana is trusted everywhere. They do not outsource and they have qualified nutritionists and scientists overseeing the formulation of their food so that they can maintain their mission, which is to be trusted by pet lovers everywhere. You can get it online at Amazon.com for $17.99. That would be the four and a half pound bag. And I do have the links in the description box below for you. And surprisingly, you cannot order this item from Chewy.com. Now, how are they doing? How is Akana doing? Akana doing? Well, we love that there are no recalls. Akana is produced by Champion Pet Foods, a Canadian company. The products, including dog and cat food and treats, are designed to be biologically appropriate for pets. The Akana Dog Food Review rating shows that Akana receives the second highest rating of four stars. However, Akana customers review this food higher. Pet parents give it 4.8 stars of a possible five stars. Okay, let me tell you something quickly. Akana got sued indirectly. It's actually Champion Pet Foods that was sued specifically, citing that Origin and Akana this, this is what happened. This is what happened in March 2018. The Champion Pet Foods Toxicity Class Action Lawsuit that happened. It alleges that the brand's dog food contained excess amounts of heavy metals and other toxins when compared to other pet food brands and that the company failed to notify consumers. And then the woman that filed the suit invited other people to come in and hate on Champion Pet Foods with her. She said, pet owners wanting to join this class action pet food lawsuit and or obtain more information about these tainted pet foods should contact the law firm directly. We won't say who. Furthermore, this is the big accusation right here. The case says that the problems cited in these dog foods include heavy metal toxicity, specifically arsenic, lead, and cadmium, as well as contamination with bisphenol A, BPA, 
All are known to pose health risks to humans and animals, including dogs. Specific allegations include negligent, reckless, and or the intentional practice of misrepresenting and failing to fully disclose the presence of heavy metals and toxins in their pet food sold throughout the United States. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. Wait, I have the list of foods she said were all bad. Sophia's food, the food in question, is not on the list. Here it is, guys. Okay, so it took a while, but then here comes the judge. February 2019, the judge says that the evidence is lacking in the class action lawsuit. And then here comes more news in August of 2019. Champion Pet Foods class action survives dismissal. And then after that, the really big headline right here came out on July 13, 2020. The headline says that Champion Pet Foods BPA class action lawsuit dismissed. Okay, and then the big headline came out right here on July 13, 2020. The headline says, Champion Pet Foods BPA class action lawsuit dismissed. A federal judge in Wisconsin has thrown out a class action lawsuit against Champion Pet Foods stemming from claims that the pet food company misled consumers about the amount of bisphenol A, BPA, in its dog food. No. So, I went out and I, I purchased a bag. Oh well, nice try. I guess you file a lawsuit and it gets dismissed, you have to let it kind of see you around. Not that they have the time, anyways. They are busy getting more stuff prepared for us in their kitchens for the 2021 Global Pet Expo trade show, March 24 through 26 in Orange County Convention Center, Orlando, Florida. The expo isn't open to the general public. It's just open to the most qualified pet product buyers in the industry. Those are the only people invited to attend the show, including an impressive number of international retailers. The show is open to independent retailers, to distributors, to mass market buyers and other qualified professionals. Again, this show is not open to the general public. So I will see there from the retail side after it's all over. We have plenty of new food coming out and plenty of reviews to do and 2021 should be very exciting. Okay, back to the review. In my opinion, I say it is an above average dry dog food. This is very grainy and very, very dry. If you do decide to invest in this kind of dry dog food, be sure to keep a handful of toppers in your dog's pantry. After 48 to 72 hours of feeding, just this food, Sophia's stews were more difficult to pass. And actually, with this, she simply held on to her meal longer. It stayed in the body of the dog longer. She ran, jumped, she played chase with the other dogs in the park. Uh, she walked one and a half miles on the nature trail. In the span of 60 minutes that she spent engaging in physical activity, she shed exactly one pile versus her usual three to four piles in a trip to the park lasting the same amount of time and exercising vigorously. Also, she ignored breakfast most days and left her AM meal for late afternoons. After the initial introduction to this feed, she preferred instead uh, tons of water. I will say this for Akana, a little goes a long way. When Sophia did consume her meal in the afternoon, she stayed full until well into the evening. With this, 
a kind of feed. She is far less enthusiastic about mealtime and much less gobbly. No snacking and no asking of me to share my lunch portion. But you know, I offered it to her anyway, right? Oh well. All right guys, uh, we're out of here. I gotta go. It's walk time here for Sophia. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If your yard is in need of a makeover, be kind to yourself and get her done. Uh, your yard isn't ruined. You can easily landscape with your dogs in mind. You and your fur babies deserve a clean and healthy environment in which to enjoy one another. That's it. I'm Jacqueline Alford, the founder of the blog, thedoggyperspective.com. Take care. Next time, we will have a chat about road dogs and trucking. I will see you in the next video. You want to come up and say hi? Goodbye.